Welcome back folks, my name is Lars Nomil and today we're gonna be talking about cyberpsychosis because ever since Cyberpunk Edgerunners came out there was a huge emphasis on cyberpsychosis in general and also in Cyberpunk 2077 we do have cyberpsychosis as a premise within some quests and missions so I wanted to talk more about that because it does seem there are some things that you have to know about cyberpsychosis how it works and how it can be removed from the lore perspective, so without further wasting your time, let's get into the video. So Cyberpsychosis, ever since going from the tabletop RPG of Cyberpunk 2020, was a way to stop people from putting too much chrome onto their selves, too many, basically, enhancements onto their body, and at the same time it was made to justify how the body would react to metal parts when you put them, because generally our bodies work in a certain rhythm, so whenever you have something new, like for example, uh, they give you a new liver or whatever, there is a chance that your body is not going to accept it, and once that happens, you have to remove it, or your entire system, or well, your entire body is going to be compromised. So, then we arrive to cyberpunk as a subgenre where you have people changing their body parts, enhancing themselves on a daily basis. Now, because that happens, bodies usually cannot pretty much handle all of those uh, new parts within the body, and that's when your chemicals in your brain start actually changing up. And that's basically is something which leads to cyberpsychosis, where you go completely nuts, you start treating everyone else as meat bags, and you start treating them like a lesser thing below you because they're just meat and you are full body chrome, so automatically you are better than them and you want to destroy everything which is not close to you. That was actually the case in Cyberpunk Edgerunners. So how does one get cyberpsychosis? There's a few things that actually go into it. So first off, as I said, like the chemistry in your body changes, but the second thing well, first off is how much chrome do you actually have? Now, do keep in mind, even with one cyberware, if you use it too much, there's a high chance you're going to be a cyber psycho. But, like, if you put too much chrome onto yourself, the chances of that happening are huge. And there's also difference. So, for example, the quality of the chrome you're gonna be putting. Obviously, if you're putting military-grade cyberware, that means that um, this cyberware has more quality, so the body is going to accept it a little bit better. But at the same time, if you're using cyberware from the street level, like for example, majority of people in Night City do, because getting military-grade cyberware is expensive and not really accessible to a lot of people, you end up with people getting that cheap cyberware and ultimately not having the care you know, that they need and just going cyber psycho because it's a big difference who is going to be putting in the, that chrome into your body, which Ripper Doc is going to be doing that because if you go to some Ripper Doc who doesn't know what they're doing, they're going to break you. But if you go to the top of the line Ripper Doctors, like for example today, if you want the best medical care, you're going to go into a private hospital, let's say, depending on the country, but you know what I'm talking about. So that's the same like in the world of cyberpunk. If you go to the best Ripper Doctor, you're going to get the best care, and at the same time, you're going to get shrinks who are going to be working with you to make sure that the cyberpsychosis is not going to be present. But again, even that doesn't mean anything, because even if you do get the best chrome in the business, like the military grade, you can get cyberpsychosis. Now, the second of all is how much do you use the cyberware you have in your body, because if you stretch your body too much, it's going to break, and if it breaks, your mind is going to break as well. That's why you take immunoblockers, that's why you limit the use of your cyberware in this world. I mean, obviously in the game it's different because it's the game and you don't really... You shouldn't have, like, this whole cooldown on it because technically, if you're gonna be going from the lore perspective, you can use Sandevistan one to two times a day, or Kareznikov, or whatever, like, doesn't matter. Whatever V uses in the game, that would break him completely if, you know, V didn't have the protection that he has. Now, can cyberpsychosis be reversed and fixed? Yes, but it's extremely expensive. So what happens ultimately is that, I mean, obviously, if you get flatlined completely, there is no way they're going to bring you back to life. But if you are, let's say, unconscious and they bring you back to this facility, you basically have doctors cyber doctors, who are gonna be taking all of the metal from your body and basically reattach you biological body parts. Not yours, but they will give you meat 
back this will help your body to relax and basically your mind to reset so what they ultimately do is they do a full reset of your system of your brain and everything so once you basically wake up they work with you so that this uh, cyberpsychosis can be reversed but again as i said it's not going to be doable in all cases it's impossible and there's a few example of cyberpsychosis for example so a person can be a, a cyber psycho but not go full cyber psycho so persons who have that who have like the minor or medium cyber psychosis they're gonna be people who you can talk with but from time to time they're going to go crazy they're going to attack someone and th those signs can be a sign of like let's say schizophrenia you have today in people so kind of similar to that and at the same time you are going to have aggressive wild behavior towards people from time to time again where it's not going to be that full cyber psychosis but things can definitely go on your nerve really fast. So for example, V, Adam Smasher, they're all on a verge of cyberpsychosis. So basically V that you know in the game, if you put like a lot of chrome on him, he is kind of that. He is a mild cyber psycho. Same can be said with Adam Smasher as well, going all the way back from 2020 lore where he does just just that he's crazy like he's going to go out and he's going to destroy the entire platoon of soldiers just because he can and just because he wants to show that his metal is better than everyone else's and that basically he is this how would i say transcended human who considers everyone else as i said before meat bags but adam smasher and people who have this mild cyber psychosis can still talk to people and they can still make very logical decisions like for example maelstrom members maelstrom booster gangs in cyberpunk all of them are either cyber psychos or on a verge of cyber psychosis that's why the maelstrom works and behaves in the way they do because they consider that metal is something everyone should do because you're going to transcend your normal human capabilities so at that time obviously because they don't have the care they should and most of the chrome they do is just going to be on the street level because they're not rich you're going to get the maelstrom members who are going to be completely cyber psychos or they're just going to be insane and cyber psychosis is such a big thing in the tabletop rpg because when that happens in the tabletop session you basically lose your character you give your character to the gm and that's it so you always have to be careful that the humanity index which was an index uh, in the tabletop rpg remains at a certain level because if your humanity index goes down that's pretty much going to be the end. And actually a fun thing in like the first teaser trailer for Cyberpunk 2077, you can actually see that the woman who was a cyber psycho at the end joined Max Stack to fight with them. And that's also a very nice thing about Max Stack because even though Max Stack fights cyber psychos, there is a problem of cyber psychosis within NCPD, especially within Max Stack, because in order to fight a monster, a cyber psycho, you need to be somewhat of a monster yourself. So most not most all max stack members are going to be completely decked out with chrome so they can be fast they can be agile and they can be strong to fight those kind of people and even they have issues where from time to time you're going to have a few max stack members who are going to go absolutely insane but the only difference between let's say maelstrom and max stack is that max stack gets some sort of a support and help so they don't go completely mad and that's pretty much it when it comes to cyber psychosis it's an amazing thing it's a huge premise if you ask me when it comes to cyberpunk as a universe especially the one which mike pondsmith wrote and it's a, such a nice thing to kind of limit the use of cyberware so it's not just okay i'm using cyberware and i have no penalty for it so on that side it's nice and that's it for today as i said thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video don't forget to smash that like and subscribe for more cyberpunk and cyberpunk lore videos i do have a lore playlist so you can check out i covered the lore extensively prior to the game coming out and when initially cyberpunk 2077 came out also huge thanks to my current patreon supporters and if you want to support the channel in an extra way i do have a patreon page and this is it this is came signing out stay class everyone and bye bye even when you feel low you can still go even when you feel slow you can still go even when there's no hope you can still go i never answered a no man i still go go go